Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our first meeting of the Governance and Council Operations Committee of May 15, 2023. All members are present here today, except for Councillor Tool, who will be joining shortly. We are now moving on to approval of the agenda. Mr. Clerk. Through you, Mr. Chair. So there are no other updates to the agenda at this point in time, unless members have additional business they wish to add. Very good. Looking at a speaker's list for today's meeting, are there any members who wish to add items to today's agenda? Seeing none, so I have a motion moved by Councillor Barr to approve today's agenda. All in favor? Any opposed? Hearing nobody saying no, that carries. We'll now move on to declarations of conflict of interest under the Municipal Conflict of Interest Act. Does any member have a conflict of interest to declare for any item on today's agenda? Seeing and hearing none, the clerk will so note for the meeting minutes. So we have uh, no announcements or delegations, Mr. Clerk, so we'll now move on to other business. And we have a next item, 9.1, a discussion item from Councillor Santos regarding Councillor website options to communicate with residents. Councillor Santos. Thank you so much, and through you, um, Mr. Chair. Um, as everyone knows, for the past few months since the beginning of this term, I've been talking about um, having more improved communication with uh, residents. Um, and I did some homework and research with respect to councillor websites from other municipalities. Uh, and for example, in Mississauga, um, councillors have an option to create their own external website. Um, and so I have started that particular process in order to better inform um, residents in wards one and five on different motions that are tabled, advocacy, a youth council, um, and some support local uh, information as well. And uh, when I wanted to list that particular website on um, the newsletter, the spring newsletter for this term, I wasn't able to because of existing policy at the city of Brampton, um, which was not uh, the same as other municipalities. And so this motion is essentially to allow flexibility for members of council to create, manage, and uh, have their own Councillor specific web page. So my web page, my website, sorry, my website is uh, councillorsantos.ca. So it's very specific to being a, a councillor website. Um, and so this motion kind of puts us in alignment with the options available to Mississauga councillors, for example, and gives us that flexibility for members of council to either choose the existing web page available on the city of Brampton or uh, develop their own website and list it on uh, various corporate material. Thank you very much, Councillor Santos. I don't see any speakers, Mr. Clerk. Are there any speakers online? Okay, uh, permission for the chair to be heard. I wanna thank uh, Councillor Santos for bringing this motion forward, understanding that of course, as members of council, we do communicate with residents on an ongoing basis and provided the member uh, it's clear that this is a website for communication with residents and so uh, it wouldn't it's part of the work day to day that we do here as members of council so I want to thank the member for bringing this forward I see no other questions so Ms. Kirk we have a motion as read on screen anyone opposed seeing none that carries the next uh, item of, for discussion from the clerk's office regarding council office furniture policy and work order submission process. Mr. Clerk. So through you, Mr. Chair, this is just a reminder um, more than anything for just members of council through this committee that um, in accordance with existing council procedure set out in the council expense policy, uh, if members do have any requests for minor uh, office reconfigurations or furniture, um, that they are to, just a reminder to do so to make those submissions through the what's called the heat ticket process or the work order process that interior design services will use to then process the request. And this is in accordance with the, the council expense policy. The policy itself sets out the standard offerings that are provided to all members of council. And if there are any exceptions to those, um, they um, can be consulted with through, um, through staff in the clerk's office and in uh, interior design services to make sure it complies with city policy and then we'll do our best to, to accommodate the request for the members. 
Thank you very much, Mr. Clerk. So just for clarity then, if there is a request to come from a member of council, that can be made directly through your office as a first step? Uh, through you, Mr. Chair, yes, it can. And then if, if it necessitates a work order, then we'll uh, uh, work with your, the office of the member to facilitate that with IDS. Very good. So we'll ensure that the minutes from today's meeting reflect that information for members of council to review. So there's uh, no need for a receipt, Mr. Clerk? No. Very good. So next item is 9.3, discussion item also from the clerk regarding housekeeping amendments to the Council Procedure Bylaw 160-2004 as amended. Mr. Fay. So through you, Mr. Chair, to members of the committee, um, as this committee, the, one of the mandates of this committee, uh, and it's the first meeting, is uh, uh, this is a committee uh, for the members in terms of uh, council procedures, meeting procedures, governance structure, all that kind of stuff. And uh, so we've added this on here if there's any um, pet peeves that uh, members of committee may have in terms of council procedures. Uh, we are working on some housekeeping amendments to bring forward to a future meeting of committee of council. Um, there is uh, an item later on the agenda about a referral from the start of the term about hybrid meetings and how council uh, can and wishes to proceed with those. Um, there was, just to bring up to the committee's uh, attention, there was a request from the last term of council that resulted in a special meeting of council called in February of 2022 uh, that contemplated some possible amendments to the procedure bylaw dealing with um, uh, waiving the procedural bylaw rules, uh, adding new business to an agenda, um, reconsideration motions, but at the time the council of the day decided just to receive that information and not pursue any of those changes. Um, so we're open to receive uh, ideas and input uh, from members of committee in terms of any procedural bylaw uh, changes that uh, may be coming along. I know some things that are top of mind in the clerk's office that I can reference is we do get lots of requests from members of, of council for new business items to be added to the agenda. And just a reminder that new business being added by a member of council uh, to a standing committee meeting, committee of council or planning committee, is in the form of a discussion item or a notice of motion, which is required to be filed uh, which are by our current deadline, which is 4.30 the Tuesday uh, of which the agenda is being published. Um, so for example, for the May 24th Committee of Council meeting, the agenda deadline is tomorrow, Tuesday at 4.30 p.m. Uh, for new business being added to a council meeting, because council is the final decision-making authority, um, it is not a discussion item unless a member wishes to get a two-thirds vote of council to add uh, such business at the meeting itself. Uh, the vehicle for new business from a member of council for city council meetings is a notice of motion. Um, because then it gives a sense of um, that information is included on the agenda and there's a sense of, of, of knowledge and information not only for the members, for staff, but also for the public about a decision that's being contemplated by council as opposed to a discussion item, which in many accounts is just an discussion, a discussion item but a topic and there is no proposed action by uh, committee or by the member. Um, some other things that have come up are delegations. Uh, right now our procedure bylaw does allow for delegations which are supplementary to business that's already on the agenda to essentially be filed up until the start of the meeting and then the obligation from the clerk's office to bring that forward. Uh, some members of this committee who are also, as everyone is a member of Planning and Development Committee, are familiar with the fact that there are uh, many times a lot of late delegation requests literally coming in in the minutes leading up to the start of the Planning and Development Committee meeting. Thankfully, we haven't had any for this evening's scheduled Planning Committee meeting. Um, uh, the other uh, item of note that one of the things that we're going to be addressing is um, if council wishes to continue with hybrid meetings, the vehicle for hybrid meetings in terms of uh, whether cameras should be on or off. Uh, so that'll be something we'll be bringing forward. But also just from members of council providing uh, information to the clerk's office about um, their attendance at meetings, whether it's in person or whether it's going to be remote. Uh, and if they leave the meeting, because under the council procedure bylaw today, if a member is in attendance at a meeting and they leave, there is an obligation from the member to let the clerk's office know so we can ensure uh, that we can advise the chair appropriately that there is a quorum present for the meeting. Um, and I know with COVID and uh, with remote participation, um, there's been a lot of flexibility in that in terms of attendance requirements. So um, we'll be trying to address that in our uh, procedure bylaw housekeeping changes as well. And I'll stop uh, there, Mr. Chair, if there's any questions from members of committee, I'd be happy to answer them, or any input in terms of uh, possible uh, adjustments and changes to the procedure bylaw. Thank you very much, Mr. Fay. A uh, quick question through uh, the chair to you then. Uh, with respect to the deadline for uh, 
uh, discussion items or for notices of motion being on Tuesdays before the agenda is published. Is, is that typical of all municipalities in general, having a deadline? Having a and deadline is a typical Tuesday. through you, Mr. Chair. It may not be a Tuesday. Um, there are a lot of agendas that are published um, well before the actual meeting date. So case in point for, for our typical meetings, a city council meeting, like t a Wednesday's meeting, the agenda was published on Friday, or actually Thursday in, in the case of last week. We strive for publication on Thursday, and that's why we have to back things up for the Tuesday to try and make sure we have all the agenda pieces. There are municipalities out there that do post uh, a full week prior to the meeting, just to have all the information out in the public domain, again, to ensure that there's, uh, it's informed decision making by the members, but also by uh, the residents and the public in terms of if they want to participate in the decision making process, uh, they have ample opportunity to review the agenda uh, prior to the meeting and let the clerk's office know that they wish to participate. Um, so definitely there is uh, a sense of a deadline. Now there are other municipalities as well that allow for um, deadlines up to the start of the meeting for information to be submitted. In fact, that was addressed in our February 20, uh, 2022 report about possible amendments to the procedure bylaw that Council of the Day decided not to pursue. And there may be situations where there may be a sense of urgency, whether it's time, uh, a commenting deadline, um, emergency that may warrant new business being added to the agenda with a simple majority. But it varies amongst municipalities and the procedure bylaws. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Clerk. I see no questions from members, so we can retire that item. And uh, with notes to be included in the minutes for members to be able to review. Next item is a Sorry, discussion. Mr. Chair. Uh, yes, go ahead, Councillor. Yeah, uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Peter. And that's a region. Uh, it's the same thing. Like, you cannot add something the last minute. I think it has to be, what, two days before? So maybe we could look at that, too, because we, we have the same thing at the region. Through you, Mr. Chair, we'll, we'll look at that. We look at the, all the Peel municipal bylaws when we are reviewing our bylaw to see if there's any um, updates or improvements that they've made to their procedure bylaws. So we'll take a look at that. Yeah, and uh, to read. Okay. Councillor Fertini, are you there? I was before it. Yeah, thank you. you. Thank you, Councillor Fertini. Are there any other questions from members, Mr. Clerk? No, very good. All right. Moving on then to the next discussion item, also from P Mr. Fay, our clerk, council office support model. So Mr. Through, Fay. through you, Mr. Chair. So uh, when council last term decided to change its uh, council office support model, um, this committee uh, in, in existence in the last term served as the steering committee for implementation. So I've added this on the agenda because this is the first meeting of this committee this term, um, just to see if there's an opportunity, if members have any comments, things are working, not working, any improvements they would like to see. And so the clerk's office can undertake to uh, pursue those with the appropriate departments. And if we need so, uh, bring the information back to this committee if there's further changes that are required for the council office support model. Very good. I don't see any questions. Do any members have questions with regards to our council office support model as it is today? I see none. So we can move on, Mr. Clerk. Thank you. Next, we have a discussion on the sixth floor council office assistant position. Mr. Fay. So through you, Mr. Chair, um, if uh, members that were around last term, they will re recall pre-COVID, uh, there was a workstation inside the glass doors on the sixth floor that uh, was staffed uh, during normal business hours that provided a bit of a concierge service, um, some um, light administrative support to the respective uh, mayor and council offices on the sixth floor. But with COVID, obviously everything shut down and the position still exists within the clerk's office. Um, but what has happened since is there's been an evolution of uh, if and when members are in and their staff are in and there is somebody coming in for a, an arranged appointment, um, the person usually would check in with either Service Brampton or call directly up to the member office and then somebody would come down from that office to escort them upstairs. Uh, so the necessity for this sort of concierge service inside the glass doors, which are still secure, um, is essentially gone. Um, so one of the questions uh, coming up for input from this committee is, what would the committee like to do? There have been some preliminary discussions between clerks and corporate security about whether or not it may be appropriate to have a corporate security person upstairs uh, in that area. 
um, but we're open to receiving feedback from uh, the committee on uh, how they would like to proceed. If the current arrangements of calling down or calling up and having somebody escort an individual up for an in-person meeting is sufficient, then we can continue that at this time. Perhaps, Mr. Fade, then, um, that does leave something to be thought of. Would the clerk's office be willing to report back with some of the options and for our consideration? Could that be done? So we have three, Mr. Chair, certainly. With, uh, with the input and consultation with corporate security, we will do that. Very good. Thank you. Yeah. Do you need a motion for that or you take that as direction? We'll, we'll take that. We've, we're already having conversations, so we'll bring a report back next time. Very good. I see no questions from members. So then we'll move on to our next item regarding fire wardens for the sixth floor mayor's office and council office. Mr. Fay, you're on a roll today. Yes. Uh, thank you through you, Mr. Chair. Um, so we've had inquiries from our facilities uh, partners because presumably with spring, there's probably a good bet there's going to be a fire uh, alarm um, and test in the near future. Um, but in, in um, updating all the lists because of staff returning back to the office, uh, we do not at this point have fire wardens identified for the sixth floor for the mayor's office, council office. Ideally, we are looking for one fire warden for the, what we call the east wing and one for the west wing. Um, <coughs> we have asked for uh, a backup and we did have uh, volunteers from Councillor Vasante and Councillor Santos's office uh, for a backup for the east wing and for the west wing, a volunteer from Councillor Fortini's office. But we still need uh, assigned fire wardens for the east and west. So uh, unless a member of council wishes uh, to volunteer one of their staff to fulfill that role, and perhaps it's on an annual basis and we rotate through, um, one of the things I was proposing, and we've discussed this at uh, some of the council office lunch and learn sessions, is I would just do a random draw of the offices. And whoever is a backup would be promoted in the subsequent year to be the fire warden. And then you serve as a fire warden for the, the one year and then uh, you're off the list and somebody else will go through until we cycle through all the council offices. All right. Um, as you were speaking, Mr. Faye, perhaps I thought, could we do one more call to that east side office and see if we can find someone who would like to step up and to fill that position and you would be completed. Would that be correct? We, so we do have a backup for the east and west. So uh, someone from your office for east, someone from Councillor Fortini's office for the west as backups but we need the actual assigned fire wardens for 2023 from the east and west, and there are two vacancies right now. So we can do a call out again, and perhaps if we don't receive anybody within the week, um, the clerk's office will randomly pick the office, and then we'll contact that member of council to talk to their staff about uh, one of their staff volunteering. Very good. That sounds like a plan. We'll okay. do that. Thank you, okay. Mr. Fay. Yeah. Uh, so we'll retire that item as well, yeah. Mr. Fay, and yeah. we're on to 9.7. Discussion on member training opportunities and needs. Uh, Mr. Fay, this is an interesting one. Go ahead. So through you, Mr. Chair, this is, um, many members may receive uh, communications directly from AMO, but uh, they have quite a robust uh, offering of training opportunities. Uh, we've listed some that were on the agenda with some links to AMO, so we're just bringing them to the committee's attention. Um, these are things that, uh, training opportunities that individual members could, in fact, register for. Uh, some are filling up or if there is enough interest from members of council, uh, we could arrange for some customized training um, for AMO and their training representatives to come to, to Brampton for a potential council workshop to do a training exercise. Um, the other thing to note is I believe we are trying to make arrangements for uh, the integrity commissioner to do a training opportunity with members of council. And uh, if there is any other training needs or opportunities that members of council have come across that would be beneficial for other members, uh, we'd be willing to share that um, with all the members to ensure that if there is any training of interest that we can ensure that we can accommodate that. M many of these, uh, or a lot of these items are covered off to some extent in some of the, uh, in a cursory way in some of the orientation training that has occurred, uh, but there's some specific training um, sessions here, Indigenous community awareness, navigating conflict, and, uh, conflict relationships, and human rights and equity that uh, are things that probably haven't been um, touched on in any great in-depth uh, with members of council so far this term, but are, there's maybe opportunities here worth pursuing. <coughs> ...that are offered. Is there opportunity for uh, reimbursement for the cost? How might that work? 
So through you, Mr. Chair, if I, I presume if a member of council individually wants to sign up for one of these, uh, they would it would be expensed to their council office budget. If there is a um, if there is a enough interest in a particular one, um, probably the clerk's office would then organize something for all members of council, and, and it would be picked up as part of the the clerk's office budget supporting council's decision making. Okay. Yep. Very good. Thank you. Yep. So with that then, thank you, Mr. Fay. We'll move on to, I believe, 10.1, yeah. which is an item referred from our council meeting early on the start of this term with regard to hybrid meetings of city council and its committee. And I'll ask the clerk to provide an introduction. We've already spoken to this, Mr. Fay. What further do we need to do? Uh, just to bring it to committee's attention that I think some uh, many municipalities at the start of the term have started to turn their attention to whether to continue with uh, hybrid meetings, abandon uh, remote meetings, and go back to pre-COVID in person. Um, it seems, just from my quick uh, anecdotal search, that most are sticking with some form of hybrid meetings. Um, I think, uh, in some respects, hybrid meetings uh, is good for, for staff. It's good for members uh, who can participate remotely. Uh, I think it's especially good for members of the public because it's, uh, uh, it's more efficient for them to participate. Uh, but we do see, and we've seen meetings since the start of this term, that uh, members of the public, if it's an important issue, will still come out in person. Um, so I think something to consider is um, we probably need a, uh, a resolution of council if we want to continue having hybrid meetings. I know there has been some sort of discussions um, internally at the staff level and others that suggest, you know, should we uh, accommodate uh, hybrid meetings for uh, standing committees, advisory committees? It does come in handy for advisory committees, particularly of note is accessibility advisory committee where uh, individual appointed members cannot always attend. It's, it's more difficult for them to attend in-person meetings. Um, but there may be other situations where in-person meeting may be the appropriate way to proceed if it's a city council meeting. So we're just bringing that to the committee's attention. Our report back in November at the start of the term spoke to the idea of possibly returning back to in-person meetings uh, with some exceptions as noted in the, re in the resolution. Um, but we'll, um, we'll take the, uh, the direction from council on that. It seems to be that most municipalities are settling into a hybrid meeting format. Um, I, I will say, though, that it is, it is uh, resource intensive. There's no question about that, supporting hybrid meetings. Um, can you expand on that, Mr. Uh, well, as you can see from all of our meetings, besides the clerk's office that you see visibly here, we have others that are participating remotely, um, taking minutes. We have IT resources uh, that are dedicated to every meeting, which didn't exist pre-COVID. Um, so, uh, and we see this, that pattern when we uh, speak to other clerks in other municipalities that it's probably a two to three fold increase in the number of staff resources to support the logistics of having a hybrid meeting. And Mr. Fay, can you comment on how well and how in well integrated the technology is with respect to, for example, in here, like at the region I can share that I've noticed when folks are attending via WebEx, which is the application they use, the, the chair not only sees the speaker's list that is present physically uh, in person, yeah. but that speaker's list also includes speakers who are waiting to speak who are on WebEx. We don't have that function here in this chamber. We, through you, Mr. Chair, we don't have that function at this point. Um, so there is no integration of the WebEx platform and the request to speak system that's uh, built into the chamber technology. Um, I, I can, we can do some inquiry in terms of the region. I don't know if they do a, uh, essentially a screenshot of the WebEx that's then up on the screen for everyone to see. And it's just, um, um, it's just, I guess, embellished a little bit by any of the in-person request to speak system that's used in the chamber. So somebody in, in the clerk's, the regional clerk's office is probably updating that. Um, is, is it a WebEx screenshot or is it a, uh, I, through the chair, if I will. So I sit very close to the clerk, and from what I could see uh, on the chair's screen, there is a speaker's list, and it seems to display both. And I would imagine in chronological order of the button being pressed, if you will, the speaker's list. And it's on the, it's on the chair's screen. Okay. Uh, through you, Mr. Chair, we can make some inquiries on that. Um, Bec and I mention that, Mr. Clerk, only because in here, if you're chairing the meeting, 
we do have to confer with you to make sure that we don't have any names on the WebEx platform because the system in here is different. That's right. The system is, is uh, internal only. Then the only way to actually look at both is to actually have the WebEx platform open simultaneously with, while being in person in chambers. Um, but we'll look into that if, if there's a way to integrate that. Uh, there, there may be a way to integrate it through our eScribe system, which the region uses, um, but that may take another introduction of technology in terms of the, the meeting participation uh, module of eScribe that I don't think members at the regional council table or uh, certainly at this table aren't using at this point. Very good. Okay. Do I see any speakers? Um, Councillor Tour. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Just a couple of comments. Um, one that uh, meetings are, um, I understand, uh, Mr. Clerk, that you need more resources to do, to continue um, hosting meetings, um, like with a hybrid option. It's very resource intensive, but when I look at the overall picture, it also makes it uh, um, makes it for better public engagement. With uh, typically, like most of our meetings, like you said, unless it's a very, uh, unless somebody feels uh, passionate that they need to show up in person and speak. We've had delegations join from work, uh, from the places of work, from different parts, um, and it makes it that much easier. Like last week we were celebrating nursing week and, and we have we had two nurses on online uh, from the place of work. It definitely makes it more convenient. Um, so, you know, I, I am all in favor of a hybrid uh, meeting model just because of the, of the public participation. And I think that's the debate that been had over many terms about meeting times, because the meeting times that we meet is middle of the week, uh, 9.30 a.m. Most people are at work that time, and they're not able to show up here and engage, and sometimes those voices are missing uh, in, in debate, uh, but people have the opportunity now to, you know, depending on the workplace policies, to uh, participate in that meeting online. Um, it definitely makes it easier. Um, so I'm all in favor for that. Um, if it is a question about resources, maybe if the clerk's office wants to consider uh, bringing that up at a later point, if, um, I don't know if that's like a next um, budget discussion to be had later on, that you need staff dedicated uh, for this, I'm sure that we can have that as a discussion at the council table and, and, and see if we can support that, but um, that would be my preference. And uh, also in terms of um, since we mentioned the, the two systems at the region and, and the city of Brampton being different, um, the good thing at the city that we have is even in a closed session, uh, the way we participate, I think we could see the meeting as well, but at the region you're not able to because of the system that they use. Uh, they're not able to view a closed session meeting. So uh, if you're joining in virtually uh, for an in-camera meeting, you don't see anything on the screen, you just see the region's logo and then you, you don't get to see anything else on the screen. So um, I do like our system better, but perhaps um, the Mr. Chair said that how, how we have the request to speak feature, again, if that's like additional resource where I'm assuming at the region appeal, uh, staff <coughs> is monitoring who raised their hand online and they are manually able to add them to the request to speak list. So if, if that is something that maybe uh, we'd wanna look into, um, that'd be part of your additional resource request <coughs> if that comes in the future. Thank you. Certainly, through you, Mr. Chair, we can look into that. Okay, thank you very much. Councillor Barr. Uh, thank you, thank you uh, Mr. Chair. I think um, I just want to comment. So with COVID, we've learned that hybrid is a new option technology that has kind of arise from COVID. And we've seen, especially for the public, it is so much easier for them to attend and making sure that we have their input. Um, I do support the hybrid model, having that balance in there, having people join in, say they have, maybe you know, with the workplace policy, maybe they're only able to have 30 minutes and joining in just for 30 minutes um, online is something that we definitely need. So having more, of the community engaged is obviously with the hybrid model, um, but I can just definitely support that. Thank you. Very good, so perhaps what you're hearing, Mr. Faye, is that there is support for the hybrid model, but you require direction in that regard, correct? 
Uh, through you, Mr. Chair, yes, because the, uh, the procedure bylaw was amended uh, during COVID to say uh, until, unless council decides otherwise, which they effectively did by referring the motion from the November meeting to, to governance committee, um, that uh, hybrid meetings would be allowed for a year after the uh, emergency was lifted. So, Good. so I think for your purposes then, we'll move a mo I'll move a motion that the hybrid model continue and that the clerk's office report back on the need for additional resources as may be required to conduct those meetings. Okay, thank you. Do you need a seconder? No, not for committee. Okay. And, and that would include any technological resources. Okay. So to include use of technology to support hybrid meetings. Okay. Do we have any speakers to the motion? I see none. Anyone opposed? So that carries. Thank you, Mr. Frey. Next, uh, members, we have council question period. Do any members have questions with regard to today's meeting? I see none. Public question period. Mr. Clerk, have we received any questions from members of the public with regard to today's first governance meeting? Very good. So we'll move on then. There's no closed session. And so our next business item is adjournment. I have a motion moved by Councillor Tour to adjourn today's meeting. All in favor, any opposed? And that carries. Thank you very much, members, for a